God's Word in my life. I'm changed and I'm different. God's Word will change you. And you may be saved for 25. I've been saved for 28 years. And I'm telling you something on a daily basis. God's Word changes my thinking. I've, there have been times when on Sunday morning I've thought something and by Friday night, by, based on the authority of the Word of God, God's changed my thinking. And that's the difference between Jesus preaching and teaching and that of the scribes. And Jesus didn't just have the authority to teach, my friend. His authority was real. There are many individuals that would say, well, you know, this is my position. And that would be the scribes thing. Hey, this is our position. And so we have authority. Well, Jesus didn't claim any authority based on position. He certainly could have, but he'd surrendered to be a man. And so here he is, and his authority is the word of God. And what we find out in verse 24, there is an individual that recognizes who Jesus is. And he speaks truth even though he's an evil spirit. He says, and the unclean spirit, in verse 24, says, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And so here is an evil spirit that exposes Jesus Christ for who he is, and that he is God. By the way, that sort of exposure didn't hurt Jesus' authority at all. But he taught us having authority, and it's interesting he did so before he was ever exposed as being the Son of God. Why is that? Because the authority was the Scriptures. And I want to encourage you today, Christian, get this. Hey, you don't have to uh, have a track record of having accomplished this and this and this. You don't have to have this kind of personality or that kind of personality to be able to have the authority of the Word of God. What you have to know is what the Bible teaches. That's, that's your authority. Hey, get over this whole experiential-based Christianity. You know, if experience-based Christianity means anything, we'd all have to be basically dragged through a pit of sin before we could ever be used of God. I mean, if I can't preach about drugs and alcohol without being an alcoholic and a drug addict, then I'll never have legitimacy. Hey, if I can't preach about what the Bible says is a wicked lifestyle without being in that wicked lifestyle myself uh, in order to understand and relate to it, uh, then I don't have any authority. My friend, I want to tell you something. My authority is not based upon personal experience. Hey, I don't have to have ten kids to be able to preach on the home. I don't have to be able to uh, be married to preach on marriage because I can read the Bible about it and I can see what God's Word says about it. And God's authority will back up the things uh, that are true and, and God's authority will convict and convince and it'll do its work. Hey, thank God if you've experienced spiritual victory. But spiritual victory isn't what gives you the authority to know it. Galatians 5 and verse 18 says, Walk in the Spirit and ye shall not obey the lust of the flesh. And I want to tell you something, you never have a spiritual victory your whole life. You can't blame it on God. You would never have a spiritual victory in your whole life. It's still a, a, uh, something that is because of the empowering of God's Holy Spirit and something that anyone can do, anyone can have, who knows Christ. And we need to understand that our authority doesn't come from anything but the Word of God. And so now Jesus, this evil spirit, confirms Jesus' authority. And he, when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, or first of all, Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And so Jesus did have the authority over an evil spirit. Now, the Bible says, verse 27, they're all amazed. And so much. They were so amazed that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority. And again, there's that same word, Commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. Now I want to speak here just a moment about testimony. I want to speak just a moment about testimony. You know, Christian, it's important that you have spiritual victory. You know, the Bible doesn't, uh, God doesn't save anyone who cannot have spiritual victory. Now, we have so many Christians that are satisfied with, or, or they are even um, in, a, in a despair or a gloom saying, this is as good as it gets for me. In other words, Pastor, that may be your kind of Christianity, or that may be those people in the church's kind of Christianity, but, you know, I just can't live like that. I just can't do that. My friend, you are predestinated to have spiritual victory. Did you know that? You study predestination in Scripture. It's not talking about your salvation. The Bible says you're predestinated. The people who are foreknown, the ones that God knew would be saved, were predestinated to be conformed to the image of His Son. And friend, your destiny, the thing that God has planned for your life on this earth, is for you to be like Jesus. There's nobody that's an exception of that. Thank God for that. Thank God that it doesn't matter where you came from. Thank God that hey, you may have gotten saved at 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or you may have gotten saved two years ago or 20 years ago. But I want to tell you something, Christian. It doesn't matter. God's predestinated you to be like Jesus Christ, to walk in a way that God would be completely pleased by. And you don't have to be ensnared and enslaved by sin. 
You can have all the promises that are in the Word of God, and they're just as good for you as they are for anybody else, because God's plan is for whosoever to be saved, and God's plan is for everyone who's saved to be like Jesus Christ. And boy, that ought to encourage your heart. That ought to give you a desire to understand the difference between somebody simply knowing things and God speak and spirituality and things that they can say that have to do with Christian uh, buzzwords. And uh, boy, I get tired of all the silly t shirts and the things that, that try, try to capture the essence of Christianity. And I'll tell you, the essence of Christianity is being empowered by God's Holy Spirit. You know, you can walk the walk, but can you talk the talk? Who cares about that, friend? Live for Jesus and have the power of God's Holy Spirit. We ought, to, we ought to get into the Word of God and get into the, where the authority is from. And it's not in our uh, having some kind of a philosophy or a way of understanding or, or thinking that gives us our authority. The authority comes from the Word of God and the truth in it. Let's get into a couple of things I want to point out this morning. So the Bible says in verse 18, Because of Jesus' authority, His fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. And I want to point out to you that the reason Jesus became famous was not because He could do something the scribes couldn't. The reason he became famous throughout Galilee is because of his authority. It was not the fact that a demon was cast out, though the scribes were powerless to do so. It was the fact that he was a contrast with all of the doctrinal error. He was a contrast with everything else that was taught. Hey, you know, it's not such a bad thing to stand alone, is it? It's not such a bad thing to stand alone. You know why? Because it'll point out the fact that you've got God's power, God's authority in your life. Hey, you may be the only person on your block that believes that it's wrong for a man and a man to be married. And I'm telling you something, in our society, just saying that, yeah, people will say, well, just, just don't go there, Pastor. Uh, they may have feelings about it, they may, but, but you know, honestly, you know, we, just, we just don't go there. I'm telling you, God's authority is on it. And the only person that can help somebody that is enslaved in sin like that is the person who preaches with God's authority. Otherwise, it's all just debatable about whether or not God made them that way and about whether or not they can actually have victory or if there's something different about their life. For you ought to have a compassion for those that are enslaved in sin, but that compassion ought to be coupled with a testimony of truth. Amen. You ought to preach the truth of the Word of God. You ought to love people that are trapped and enslaved in sin. But it ought to be done so on the authority of the Word of God. And they can have victory. Well, if you don't have the Word of God, you'll never believe that. Now, verse uh, 29, the Bible says, Forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, this is speaking of Jesus and the disciples, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon they tell him of her. Brother Tony, Simon was married. Brother, even though he was the first pope, he, uh, he was married, and uh, so popes allowed to be married. So there you have it, authority of the Scripture on it. That's just for Tony this morning. Everybody else can ignore that line. Verse 31, He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. I think, I think that the, the uh, qualification here of this, this last phrase, and she ministered unto them, is significant, don't you? First of all, because it's included in the Scripture. Hey, what's significant about it, that this woman served Jesus? No, what's significant about it is that I believe the reason Jesus healed her was to serve you know, many individuals desire healing. But they don't desire anything more than that. I um, have come to a place in my life where I don't pray for people to be healed that don't want to serve God. Really don't. I don't, don't mean to be unkind about anybody, but if you're not going to serve Jesus, what's the use of living? Amen. What's the use of it? And I'll tell you something else. If I, if I didn't intend to serve God, I wouldn't ask God to heal me if I were sick. Just wouldn't. What's the use? What's the point? Hey, this life isn't about, it isn't about living for the things that are in this world because as soon as we pass into the next life, the things of this world won't matter anymore and eternal will be what matters. If you're not going to live for eternity, what's the use of living? See, a lot of people ask the question, what's the use of living? But the answer to it is live for Jesus and it'll matter for eternity. That's the answer. And when Jesus heals this lady, she doesn't stay in her sick bed and get recovered. People don't come around and say, oh, you know, we want to see the miracle lady. No, she just started serving Jesus. She got up and she ministered to them. She began to serve. And this is not, of course, at all speaking about the role of a lady. This is simply speaking about the role of a Christian in serving Jesus Christ and in his salvation. So don't, don't take and make more than the Bible says about it, but I think it's important that it's included there. Then the Bible says that even when the sun did set, in verse 28, his fame is spread abroad. And then now we're going to see the, procession, the progression of that. When the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. 
know what will happen when you have victory in your life and God saves and He changes a sinner?